Let me, let me start at the beginning and, um, and see if I can um, work it out. The artwork came as a result of my scientific knowledge. I studied science primarily. I never intended to become an artist. My, my goal going through high school, university, and PhD programs was to become a lecturer or professor and then maybe become the director of a marine lab somewhere in the Caribbean. That was my ultimate goal. The art came along as a, um, a need to record in those days, you know, before you had computers and everything, record everything exactly as it was, whether it was a practical class or an animal you're doing a project on. And so my skill as an artist originated with being an illustrator, and I used very detailed pen and ink work uh, very detailed and very authentic, of course, because you're, you're working from life. And so that really helped me later in life, and as the desire to paint more and more wildlife, but particularly fish, grew, um, so I strive for that authenticity, that accuracy, and it's something that nobody else seems to have done since you know, I got going. There, there are a lot of other people who have come up in the world um, who have kind of um, attempted to do what I do. But in wildlife art, you, you meet a lot of terrestrial wildlife artists who are extremely good. Their paintings are very well executed. But for some reason, the aquatic medium has, has just restricted the number of good artists to a very few. I can count them on one hand. And people whose art that I would collect or, or keep uh, that is accurate, representative, um, informative, and educational. So that whole process has taken a long time to evolve. And um, I, I certainly reached a peak, I think, in about the mid-late 80s when I realized that, wow, people are accepting what I'm doing as um, you know, the, the, being a formative artist in my, in my genre. And, um, and so I appeal both to the fine art world and the, the sort of commercial art world and manage to cross and keep both happy at the same time. There's a lot of angst between commercial artists and fine artists. So um, the natural ability was there, but it took a lot of discipline to get to where I've got since then. And being productive. A lot of artists are not productive. They, they paint on a whim. I hear there are people who are far more talented than I am, uh, but they just don't have the drive. They don't have the business know-how. Uh, they don't know how to organize their productivity with all the other things, the other responsibilities you have which is in business to go and do trade shows and uh, consumer shows and get in front of people, get on TV, have a TV show, uh, broadcast your stuff through nowadays through social media. Um, and so it's, there's many ways you can do it. and uh, We use every avenue possible. There is no blueprint for what I've done. And that's why it's kind of hard to give advice. And what I do say to people, if you're an artist, is that, and you have talent, and you are able to go and participate in exhibitions, but you need to get in front of people, both physically, and, and, and do the shows, and do the legwork, and the travel. But B, nowadays, you have the wonderful attribute of social media, and websites, and all the interactions that you can have. And you can get your art out to many, many more people very quickly, nowadays, than you could 15 or 20 years ago. So use that ability. The first, I, I, I did, um, my first one-man art show was in Jamaica in 1985. I'm from Jamaica, by the way, just in case you were wondering where the Caribbean connection came from. Um, was, was very well received. But the following year, I had my first show in Fort Lauderdale, and I sold every piece of art that I had there. And it was at that time that I realized that I had the potential actually to make a living out of this, because I was finishing my PhD, I just finished it actually. I was embarking on the course of becoming a university professor and, and taking that fully academic um, career. And it was just like a light switch going on. This can work. And given the, the population and the, the interest in fishing and diving that you have in, in Florida and North America, huge market potentially, I thought, well, shall I take the plunge? And I did. And it was, it's, I've never looked back. What am I most proud of for my career? Well, it's not over yet. <laughs> That's the best part. I'm, I'm realizing the greater potential that we have now um, as we become more complex and more involved. The greatest, well, for me, the most gratifying part of it 
is to reach so many people with something that they love to, to have or, or be involved with, which is fishing. So that's gratifying in itself. I mean, this weekend I was in Greenville, South Carolina, at the Bassmaster Classic, and I have never met so many appreciative people as I have in, in three days as I have at this show. And in Miami, where I was the week before at the Miami Boat Show, which is salt water, salt water, salt water, we have you know a huge turn turnout and people come by and we, we work all day on signing stuff and so on. But here in Greenville, A, everybody is so polite. Uh, they're well brought up, well mannered. But most of all, they are so appreciative. And that, that for me is very gratifying. And of course, I'm not out of my depth in freshwater circles, but it's still, I'm not known for my freshwater art as much as I am for the saltwater art. So that's great. But I think what's going to leave a long-term um, mark with people is the connection with the science and the research work and the need for more conservation uh, because the oceans face such a critical period right now and the the decisions we we make collectively as consumers or as researchers or as sponsors are really going to seriously affect what happens um, in the long term because we're at a critical stage in, in the exploitation of many different types of marine systems and so I, I, I need to act fast and, and make it work along with other people and we are all about collaborating so it's not about I, 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 it's a team. It's all the people we, we work with, all the collaborators, uh, like-minded organizations, NGOs, governments even. Um, we want to encourage people to do the right thing and spend the money on learning more about marine systems and so that you can have the conservation efforts take place. So embarrassed. <laughs> I don't deserve this. I mean, it's, there, there are people who have done much more than I have, but um, I'm obviously very honored. Um, but um, <sighs> what, it, what does it mean to you? It, well, it's, it's, it's an appreciation of the, of the work that my team has done. I'm, I'm a part of a team. Um, sure, I, I come up with all the artwork and I, I go to the shows and I help with a lot of stuff. But we have a very active team of people, both on the, uh, the for-profit side and on the non-profit side, who, who help me. And uh, they're all motivated, they're all energized, uh, they're all, they all get it. And uh, they do a, a very good job of A, keeping me in business and B, um, telling the story. And so it's about the recognition of a group of people, not just an individual. I'm I have to keep going. Um, a, I feel young enough and motivated enough to, to keep it going. I can, physically. Um, I, there's so much to do, especially in the ocean. I would love to attract a few more really big corporate sponsors to, to help take the pressure off the, the fundraising part of it, because that is time consuming and difficult. Um, and I think a lot of corporate, big corporations in America would do very well for sponsoring not only the work that we do, but other research organizations, especially in relation to ocean issues, uh, because it is such a big issue that faces everybody. Um, they can really make a difference. You know, a couple hundred thousand dollars will go a long way in forwarding, furthering a lot of the research work that needs to be done. We're not talking about billions here and there. Um, there's lots that can be done for not very much money. It also gives them, um, makes them look greener. It's, it's about doing the right thing and, and taking issues and concerns and uh, becoming involved and doing the right thing to get a result. So it benefits corporations to become involved with this. And you know, whereas people have a lot of issues too, um, social, health, all that. If we don't take, <clears throat> if we don't take care of this planet, <laughs> all of us are going to, you know, come to a quick demise, and so and be become profitable. Uh, so I formed alliances, partnerships through licensing because I don't manufacture the shirts myself. I allow them to use my artwork on a variety of products, especially apparel, uh, but to generate income. And so they're responsible for manufacture distribution, marketing, stuff like that. And they pay me a royalty. And it's from that royalty that we, we put money back into the research and so on. Um, that all came about in the mid-1980s through meeting people who owned t-shirt companies who fished. And there was a need at that time, and a, um, the evolution of printing processes then too 
went from you know block printing, which is fairly simple, to full color process printing and m using multiple screens thereafter, so they could accurately represent my artwork on apparel, and that really worked. And as the evolution of apparel has grown, so have the challenges in in terms of how much art is enough and you know, making it subtle or not, or loud or whatever you want. So that's been going for 29 years, so we've been doing it for a long time. And I would say in the last 10 years, it's really done really well. And so we've become more visible. And I'm glad to say that the, the brand has been embraced by a more, a younger audience, hence the launch of our collegiate series, which has done really well. And um, of course, we want more young people fishing too. And so that's going to be the future of this entire industry and the sport. I, I love the subject matter. I love dealing with the animals. Um, I love dealing with the people who deal with the animals. The, the sport fishing fraternity is a wonderful community. And you have a very vibrant one here in, in North Carolina and South Carolina, albeit, you know, mostly summertime for marine stuff, but it's all year round for the freshwater. So it's an amazing group of people with whom to, to interact and, and deal. And um, the fact that you, you can make them happy, make them smile by having a cool product for them to use and buy, or buy and use, is very gratifying. I think the, the sport fishing world is, it, it, you asked me earlier too, I've, I've had families come to our signing appearances, you know, grandpa, father and son, all wearing Guy Harvey stuff. And so it's not, you're not appealing just to one age group, it's the entire family. And fishing is a sport that appeals to a wide cross-section. You don't have to be fit, you don't have to be rich, you don't have to buy tons of stuff, you can just go and fish. So it's very far-reaching in terms of the, the percentage of the overall population of a country. I just want to say thank you very much. It's, it's a huge pleasure to be here at Elon. I've heard a lot about it. I've been asked to come here for a number of years, and I'm glad that we have the opportunity now to, to sit down and talk.